Let's go ahead and pray. Heavenly Father, in the name of our Lord and our Savior, Jesus Christ, we thank you for today. We do believe, like your word says, this is a day that you've made, and we are going to rejoice, and we are going to be glad, 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 glad in it. And Heavenly Father, we thank you for tonight. Those in this uh, nice warm room, those of like precious faith, we thank you for them, Father God, and we ask you to bless them today, bless this meeting today, bless this time today, bless everyone that is here and all those that will be coming in in just a few moments. We praise you, we thank you in Jesus Christ's name, amen. amen. And go ahead and be seated and relax. God is so good, isn't he? God is a good God. Real faith is not sense faith, and we've been talking about that. Real faith is faith that comes from the Word of God. Real faith comes when you and I open the Word of God and, and read the Word of God and understand the Word of God. And that's why we spend time teaching the Word of God because real faith comes from the Word of God. Uh, and last week we ended with saying something I want to begin with uh, talking about today, and that is uh, how do you receive something by faith? Now we talk about faith, and a lot of people refer about, to faith, but how do you receive something in faith? So we said this last week, we want to go back over it just to remind you before we get into it, the rest of our teaching, and that is this. Find a promise from God's Word that would deal with whatever you're facing. Find a promise in the Word of God that would handle something that you're facing. There's 7,000 different promises in the Word of God, so it, it's kind of easy to find one. We just open the Bible and, and, and look or we ask another person who loves the Lord and has been around for a while, or get on your iPad or your, your, your uh, computer and just put in, uh, is there a, a verse in the Bible that deals with this? Uh, and you'll be surprised. It, it'll, it'll be there. Uh, the second thing you do is you believe God's Word. First you find a promise in God's Word, and then you make a decision to believe God's Word. Uh, faith comes by hearing, hearing by the Word of God, but you and I, uh, we decide whether we're going to believe it or not. Uh, it just doesn't, you know, make you believe it. You and I decide, are, am I going to believe the Word of God or am I not going to believe the Word of God? And then the third thing is this. First, find a scripture that pertains to the thing that you're needing in your life. Secondly, uh, choose to believe that. And then thirdly, do not consider anything contrary to what the Word says. A lot of times when we make a decision to live for God, a lot of times when we make a decision to stand in faith, something will arise and try to challenge you right where that is. Whatever that is, if you're believing for a healing, if you're believing for finance, you're believing for uh, your marriage, the marriage, uh, a relationship, whatever it is, uh, when you find a scripture and you say, okay, there's the scripture, I'm going to believe it, um, there's going to be some signs and things that will show up that will tell you you're not healed. There will be things that will tell you it's not going to work out. There will be signs that will come up. And that's what the devil does. He comes to try to confuse us. So when you re make a decision to receive in faith, what you do is you find a scripture that deals with what you're facing. You choose to believe it, and you refuse to even give thought to anything contrary. When it goes across your mind, get your mind back into the Word. Look back at the scriptures. Uh, you know, uh, meditate on it. And think about it. That's what God told Joshua to do, to meditate on the Word of God. And then, of course, like we said last week, then praise God for the answer. Now, again, praising God before you've received it physically is faith. Praising God after you already received it is gratitude. But uh, faith is when you praise Him before it's actually manifested in your life. Uh, telling somebody thank you for something after they gave it to you is, is gratitude, and you're thanking them. But thanking them before you actually receive it is faith that they're going to follow through with what they said. And so when you read God's Word and you see a promise in God's Word that pertains to what you're standing for, you start thanking God for it and giving them thanks. That's how we can exercise our faith. Now last week I read some scriptures. I'm going to go through some scriptures. The reason I'm doing this is so we have some scriptures. And so some of you have taken notes and that's always a good thing to do. And if you are, here's some scriptures that you can just grab hold of that may uh, deal with an area that you're, that you're believing God for. Uh, if you want to receive, here's some scriptures that might help you receive. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 54 and verse 17. Isaiah 54 and verse 17. It says, No weapon that is formed against you will prosper, but every tongue that shall rise up against thee in judgment thou shalt condemn. 
And then it says, this is the heritage of the servants of God. See, we think it's just for them back then. No, no, this is the heritage of all of us. And their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord. So uh, no weapon formed against you can prosper. If things seem to be attacking you, this is a good scripture to grab hold of. And if you, if you link that over to the New Testament, you say, uh, but I'll prosper and be in health even as my soul prospers. You can say, no weapon formed against me is going to prosper, but I'm going to prosper and I'm going to be in health even as my soul prospers. Those are some scriptures you can grab hold of. Here in Isaiah chapter 40 and verse 29 is another one. It says, he giveth power to the faint. If you ever starting to feel a little weary, uh, I'd, I'd claim this scripture. He giveth power to the faint. To them that have no might, he increaseth, increaseth their strength. So, hey, when I start to feel a little weak, why walk around saying I'm feeling weak? Why don't we just get into the Word of God? This is a promise of God. Grab it, confess it, confess it, confess it, and don't give ear to anything else. In Isaiah chapter 40, verse 31, it says, But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. There we go again. Feeling a little weak, how do we get strength? Uh, spend some time with God. Uh, but they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. You come to a service, and some people come to a service afterwards and go, oh, I'm so tired. Well, that's your confession. You can have it, you know, if that's what you want. Go ahead and confess it. Say, I'm just really tired. Okay, you're tired. Or you could say, you know, those that wait upon the Lord, spend time with God, enjoy God. Those that spend time in the Word of God, those that spend time uh, in, in the family of God, God renews our strength. Amen? They shall mount up as, as wings of eagles. They shall run and not grow weary. They shall walk and not faint. God is good. Amen. Amen. Uh, in Isaiah chapter 41 and verse 13. Isaiah chapter 41 verse 13. Is it up there? Why don't you read it to me? Because this will be a way of us confessing it together. Go ahead. Wow, isn't that a great scripture? You say, I've got some need in my life, and you start confessing that. The Lord tells me that he's going to grab my right hand, and I shouldn't fear because he's going to help me. I have a situation over, but God says he's going to help me. I have a situation, but God says he's going to help me. That's how you get it. You find a scripture that it goes right in line with what you need, and then you start confessing it. You start get, uh, believing it, and you don't give your mind any, any w wiggle room. You don't say, oh, maybe not. No, no, God's going to help me. Why don't you just say that God's going to help me? In James chapter 4, verse 7, it says, Submit yourself, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. Uh, I remember uh, uh, people would come in my office and tell me they're so scared of the devil. And uh, the truth of the matter is the devil will flee from you. Um, we don't have to run from him. Uh, he'll flee from us. All we have to do is submit ourselves to God and then resist the devil, and he will flee from you. So, so you don't have to worry about him beating you up. All you have to worry about is, is, is are you spending time with God? Submit yourself to God. You just resist the devil, and he has to flee from you. I remember a um, great man of God said to me, a lot of people are so worried about the devil, if they just knew who they were in Christ, they would understand the devil's more worried about them than we are of him. Amen. Amen. There's some other scriptures, but those are just some I wanted to share with you. But I talked about on Sunday, I talked about something, got some feedback, and I, I wanted to talk about this today, and uh, you're valuable. You are valuable. Now, this goes right along with faith, and you're going to see why I'm saying that. It's important that we build our faith, because if we feel like we're not very valuable to God or we're so undeserving to receive a blessing from God, our faith won't work. So we need to understand this, and we talked about this as we talked about other things on Sunday, but you are valuable to God. It's important that you know that. It's important that you don't wonder about that because otherwise you'll hear a scripture from the Word of God and you'll say, well, that's really good, but I don't measure up. The truth of the matter is every one of us are valuable to God. Each and every one of us were valuable to God. Over in Psalm chapter 139, verses 15 through 16 in the Good News Translation. Uh, Cheryl, we thank you for being here tonight. Uh, we, we need to pray for Cheryl. Not, that makes me sound like she's something deficient. No, she's fine. Uh, Cheryl's a great woman of God. She's uh, uh, the lady uh, uh, Deutimus Gathering. She's the one that really heads it up uh, along with those other uh, workers that lead it with her. I really look to her, though, as the, the main leader. And uh, Unfortunately, they gave her promotion at uh, work. The promotion, uh, or the job, I should say, came along with working Sundays. 
And uh, so now all of a sudden she's working more Sundays than she wants to. So we honestly, we were asking you to please pray for Cheryl, not to lose her job, but that they'll change it and she can come to church on Sunday. Amen. Yes. And, she, and she can be here. On, yeah. And then she can be here on uh, Wednesdays. She's here on Wednesdays when she can be. And so we would love to see you, Cheryl. We're so glad you're here. I'll try to take it easy on you tonight on these scriptures. I'll say them slow. Okay. <laughs> Uh, Psalm 139, verses 15 through 16. And, uh, her, her mother's back there also. I shouldn't, I shouldn't just talk about Cheryl, not her mother. Uh, a lot of people think her mom is her sister. <laughs> but her mom is just a young-looking mama. And we thank God she raised her the right way. Verse 15. In verse 15 it says, My bones, this is a good news translation of the Bible. I want you to know, watch what it says. When my bones were being formed, carefully put together, in my mother's womb, when I was growing there in secret, you knew that I was there. You saw me before I was born. The days allowed to me had all been recorded in your book before any of them ever begun. I'm telling you right now, God knows you and you're valuable to God. Amen. You see that up there? Isn't that a tremendous scripture? Before you were, man, this is fantastic. Isaiah chapter 49 and verse 16 in the Good News Translation, it says, Behold, I have uh, graven thee upon, I, I've graven thee upon the palms of my hands. Thy walls are continually before me. Uh, he, he has your name right there. He knows who you are. He knew you when you were being formed in your mama's womb. He before you ever were born, he already knew all about you. God loves you, and God considers you valuable. In Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 11, it says this, For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. We think God's mad at this, but it says this, saith the Lord, thoughts of peace and not of evil, to give you expected end. God values you. God considers you valuable. God loves you. He knew you before you were born. He knew you when you were being, your bones were being formed. He knew you then. He knew the days of your life. And he thinks you're valuable. He cares about you. The, uh, your worth to God is very, very important. I want to talk to you about your worth. We talked about this on Sunday, but we need to know this. The worth. The worth of something is sometimes People put it down. They don't know how valuable it is. This water here, it may be sold for 99 cents. It may be sold for a dollar. But if you're on the desert, that thing all of a sudden becomes worth 100 bucks. Uh, we sometimes don't know how to judge the worth of something. We don't really know. We look at stuff and we, we're not sure what it's worth. For instance, let me give you an example. Uh, if I brought a diamond in here and said to you, how much is this diamond worth? Uh, most of us wouldn't have that little thing you put in your eye. We wouldn't know to look for the flaws or all that kind of stuff. We may say the diamond's worth 500 bucks. We might say 1000 That diamond could be worth $22,000. It could be worth more because we're not uh, experts in evaluating how much a diamond is. It takes somebody who knows that. Uh, when, when God looks at you, God knows more about you, and he could judge you better than anyone else. He knows you. He knows the quality of you. I want to read to you what God paid for you. In 1 Peter chapter 1, verse 18, it says this, 18 and 19. It says, For as much, for as much ye know that ye were not redeemed with corruptible things. Things that can be corrupted, things that can be fallen apart, things that money, money is, can be can rot. You pay, uh, I'll give you some food, it can rot. I'll give you this or that, it could fall apart. I'll give you a home, the home could fall apart. It says, for as much as you know that you were not redeemed with corruptible things, things that could be corrupted, as silver and gold, from your vain conversations, that's you, conversations there means your matter of life, received by the tradition from your fathers, but with the precious blood of Jesus, as the lamb without blemish and without spot, I want you to know that you're valuable to God because God gave his son Jesus Christ for you. The most valuable thing that there is. Uh, things that could be corrupted would be everything else. Thing that couldn't be corrupted is Jesus Christ. Oh, Satan tried to corrupt him. 
He did everything he could do to corrupt them. But Jesus could not be corrupted. God gave something that is uncorruptible. He gave his son, Jesus Christ. He shed his blood for you. And you say, well, he shed it for the guy next to me too and the woman across the street from me. And yeah, he did, but he don't, take it, don't, don't belittle it. He paid it for you because he, he'll do it just for one of us. Amen? Amen. So you're valuable to God. I, I want to read to you another scripture just talking to you how valuable you really are to God. Well, you know what? I want to tell you, talk to you for a minute. Again, the price that somebody pays for something lets you know how valuable you are. If God gave Jesus Christ for you and for me, that tells us that we're very valuable. Now, the devil will come along and tell you that you're worthless. Your neighbor will come along and tell you you're worthless. Sometimes the husband will tell the wife, the wife will tell the husband, the kids will tell the parents, and the parents will tell the kids that they're worthless. But God said you're so valuable to him. Even though you've sinned and made mistakes, even though you're not perfect, you're so valuable to God who knew you before you were born and knew the days of your life before you were born. He still thought you were so valuable. His son shed his blood for you. God valued you enough for his son to pay for your salvation, for you to be redeemed. You were bought with the blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. So when someone tells you you don't measure up, tell them that they don't know what they're talking about. When somebody tells you about all the mistakes in your life, uh, you tell them, I know I'm not the only person without mistakes. And you point to them. And you say, I know, but, but Jesus shed his blood for me. I'm valuable. Now there's four things that can happen uh, when you know your worth. I just want you to know this. The reason I went to this today is because you're valuable. And it's important we know our worth. And there's four things that can take place within us when we start to realize our value or start to realize that we have great worth. Now, the first thing is it increases your faith. It's interesting when we start understanding how God loves us, when we start understanding that we have worth, it actually increases your faith. You can, you can believe better because now you, you, okay, God, thank you. It's all because of Jesus Christ. It's not because of me, but I'm valuable to you. I thank you. Before I thought I had no right to ask you. Now I have a right to ask you because of Jesus. You do consider me valuable. I can come to you. If you have a father who puts you down all the time, doesn't like you, you feel funny going to him and asking him for something. But if you have a father that has done everything he can for you, and then you go to him, it's easier to ask daddy for something. And God says, I want you to know I've done everything for you. I've sent my son Jesus Christ to die for you. I want you to have faith to come to me. I want you to be able to believe that you can talk to me. It's okay to talk to me. I sent my son Jesus for you and he died for you. So I'm not a father that's withholding you. There's a scripture in the Bible that says uh, our heavenly father will give you good things to those that ask. He wants to bless you. God is a good God and God wants and your faith goes up. He considers me valuable. He thinks that I'm more than my regular daddy does. He thinks I'm better than my husband or my wife does. He thinks me he's better than my parents do. Uh, he, God loves me more than my kids do. God, I'm valuable. Now I have faith to talk to God because I realize that God considers me valuable. In Romans chapter 10 and verse 17, it says that so then faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. So see, as we start to understand our worth according to the word of God, we start understanding our value according to the, our, our value according to the word of God, all of a sudden faith leaps up. So four things take place when we understand our worth. We start understanding that we have some value and our faith rises up and we can talk to God. In Luke chapter 12, verse 32, I just think this is a great verse. This is Jesus Christ speaking. And this is where it starts happening. We understand that we're in the flock of God, that we're, we're his uh, flock. Jesus is our shepherd. It says here in Luke chapter 12, verse 32, fear not. That means uh, fear is gone, faith rises. Uh, fear not, little flock, for it is your Father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom. Ooh, did you just hear that? He says, don't fear. Uh, uh, again, you've heard me say this, but I, I, I'll say it again and again and again. Um, my pastor, Brother Sumrall, uh, when you drive on his property, he used to have a big uh, billboard, and it would say, uh, feed your faith and starve your doubts to death. And so it, when he says here, fear not, little flock, he's saying, don't be in fear. 
know that it is your, my father's and your father's good pleasure to bless you. That faith rises up when I start realizing that God values, values me and values you so much that he wants to bless you. It is his good pleasure to bless you. He wants to bless you. So now my faith rises up and now I start to ask God, not in fear, now I ask God in faith. Faith increases as you start to realize your worth in God's eyes. But it's just not faith, it's peace. Uh, it, it increases. Peace will increase in your heart when you and I know our worth according to God. When we understand that God considers you and I valuable. There's peace in our hearts. Over in John chapter 3, verse 33. Well, that's not the right scripture. So I'm going to go to John 6, I mean Matthew 6, verse 25, and we're going to go all the way to the end of uh, Matthew 6. Now this scripture here is just a beautiful scripture of Jesus Christ. You can actually read the whole, the whole uh, chapter uh, 6 of Matthew and you'll start realizing that what God's trying to do or Jesus' his son's trying to do is trying to let you know that you, you don't have to try to get approval of men because God already loves you. He says when you fast, don't fast like the hypocrites do where they do this and do that to try to make themselves look like they're suffering. Uh, you're not going to receive anything from God. He said, you don't have to do all that. Just humbly fast before God. God thinks you're so valuable that he'll reward you privately because God loves you. You're valuable to God. When you pray, he says, don't stand there and try to say these big, huge prayers and think you have to have everything so beautifully. I've had people say to me, Pastor, I can't pray. I don't know how. I said, do you pray at home? Yeah. Do you pray in the car? Yeah. Uh, why are you afraid? Well, because people will judge it. Who cares? Just pray to God. God, that's what Jesus was saying. He says, there are those people who just want to do flowery prayers and all that. He said, don't do that. You don't have to do that. Just pray from your heart and your father will bless you. He said, your father believes you're so valuable. You don't have to worry. Just pray from your heart and I'll bless you. He said, even when you give alms, if some people try to earn God's blessing by trying to pray. He says, you don't have to do that. Pray but pray, you don't have to earn his blessing. He already wants to bless you. Some people do it by fasting. He wants to earn God's uh, grace and earn God's love. And God says, Jesus says, no, no, no. He already loves you. Some people say, well, I'm going to give and give and alms and, and help the poor. Do it. But don't do it thinking that God doesn't already love you. And you have to earn it. God already loves you. Amen? Amen. He says, when you do that, you, you're actually going to you do it, and people will think it's wonderful because you'll, you'll draw attention to yourself. But he says, you don't need to do that. Just do it privately. God loves you so much, he'll, he'll bless you. But then here's a scripture in, in Matthew 6, verse 25. I'm going to read it on. I'm going to read all the way through the end. Now think about this. What are you saying? Remember, he's wanting to give you peace. You don't have to worry about this. Just take it easy. Just relax. Therefore I say unto you, take no thought, no worry, of your life, of what you should eat or what you should drink, nor yet for your body, what you shall put on. Is not life more than meat and the body more than a raiment? Behold the fowls of the air. He's trying to say, you're valuable. I want you to have peace. He says, behold the fowls of the air, for they sow not, neither do they reap, nor gather into barns. Yet your heavenly Father feedeth them. Are ye not much better or more valuable than they? Let me ask you a question. Has the devil convinced you that the birds are better than you? Has the devil convinced you that the bird in the front yard is, is better and God loves it more than you? I mean, sometimes we feel that way. Sometimes we feel, you know, lower than a, 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 you know, the belly of a snake. And we think, I, I'm, I don't add up. But this scripture is trying to say, listen, if God takes care of the birds of the air and you're more valuable than they are, be at peace. God's going to take care of you. Be at peace. See, your faith rises, but then peace comes in. So, you know what? God really loves me. Why have I been worried about this stuff? Why am I so worried? God loves me. I'm at peace. Amen. Amen. Which of you, in verse 27, which of you by taking raiment can add one cubit unto his stature. And why take ye thought of raiment? Consider the lilies of the field, how they grow, how they toil not. Neither do they pine, spine, spin, I mean. They, think about this. He said, look, some people are so consumed in trying to put on good clothes because then maybe they'll be accepted. 
So they worry and worry and worry about looking. They got to put this clothes on and that clothes on. And, and Jesus is saying, don't worry about that. Your father loves you so much. You're so precious to him. He's going to take care of you. In fact, look at the lilies of the field. They don't worry about being accepted of God. They don't worry about what other people think. They just enjoy life. And God makes them beautiful. Just know you're beautiful. Just know you're all right. Just know you're fine. Randy, you're beautiful. Just think about that. Rick, you think he's beautiful, Rick? I don't know. No, you don't answer that. It goes on in verse 29. And yet I say unto you that even Solomon in his, all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Wherefore, if God so clothed the grass of the field, which is today, today is, and tomorrow is cast into the oven, shall he not much more clothe ye, O ye of little faith? Now what he's trying to do is build their faith, but also give them peace. See, when you and I start realizing that we're valuable, we have worth in God's eyes, our faith rises up and we can talk to God and believe God. And we also are at peace. I don't have to worry about all this stuff because God's going to take care of me because I'm valuable to God. I'm worth something to God. God considers me valuable. I don't know why, but he does. I'm so glad he does. I don't know what he has planned for my life. I don't know why he wants me here, but he's going to show me. But he values me. Turn to somebody and say, you're valuable to God. Turn to somebody else, somebody else, if there's somebody else around you, say, you're valuable to God. Verse 31, it says this. You know, if you really believe that, peace rises up in your heart. Faith rises up because you go, I'm valuable. I'm valuable to God. In verse 31, it says, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall I eat or what shall I drink? Or whatsoever shall we be clothed? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek. For your heavenly Father, see, he's your Father. He's your heavenly Father. Uh, some people say, don't tell me that he's my Father because my dad was mean. Well, he, this is a different Father. So my, my dad was a, a tyrant. Now, God's not a tyrant. It's hard for me to receive from God because I think of him as my Father. No, your daddy didn't measure up to God at all. There's no daddy that measures up to God. God is above and beyond any father. And guess what? He's above and beyond any mama. Amen? Amen. So, so let's get over that and just say, hey, he's your heavenly father. O ye of little faith, therefore, take no thought, saying, what shall ye eat, or what shall ye drink, or wherefore shall we clothe? For after all these things do the Gentiles seek for your heavenly father. Say, he's my heavenly father knoweth that you have need of all these things. Be at peace. But seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things shall be added unto you. That means the food, the clothing, all that stuff that you were worried about and I was worried about, God says, I love you. You're valuable. You're precious. I think you're wonderful and I want to take care of you. More than I do the birds, more than I do the lilies of the field, I think you're more valuable than all those things. And I want you to know your value and your worth is huge. And if I took care of the birds of the air, if I took care of the lilies of the field, and you're wonderful, then I'm going to take care of you. <gasps> Be at peace. Turn to somebody and say, peace. <laughs> I said that to somebody the other day, and they said, oh, don't do that. That's a satanic. What the heck? You know. In verse 34, take therefore no thought of tomorrow, for the morrow shall take thought of the things of itself. Sufficient unto the day is the evil thereof. So when you and I know that we are valuable and know our worth, this is faith. We're talking about faith, real faith. When you and I know that we're valuable and know that, uh, that we have great worth in God's eyes, it builds our faith, it increases our peace, and it also increases our joy. Our joy rises up inside us. You know, the joy of the Lord is our strength. If you want to have joy, start realizing the, who you are. Some people work so hard at getting faith. No, just relax. Just listen to God. Start to understand who you are and what he's done for you. And quit working so hard at it. And just relax and enjoy God. Read his word. Enjoy the word of God. And you're going to find faith will rise up. Your faith will get stronger. You'll find more peace in your heart than you've ever had before. Because before you were so busy running and trying to make it happen, God says, stop. Just pray. Stop. Just give. Stop. Just do it. But don't worry about it. Be at peace. Amen? 
So it increases your joy. In John uh, 15, verse 11, it says, Jesus says, there's some things I'm going to say to you. And he, say, and he tells them, and then he says, these things I have spoken unto you that my joy might remain in you and that your joy might be f -f 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 full. I like that. He said, I'm speaking these things. The reason I'm telling you these things is that my joy will remain in you, in you, and that your joy might be full. So as we get into the Word of God, we start understanding some things. And one of the things we need to know is that we're valuable to God, that you have great value. I don't know what your mama told you, what your daddy told you, what your boyfriend told you. I don't know what your husband or your wife told you. I don't know what your kids told you. or you've, I don't know what your parents told you. But I do know what God said about you. He said you were valuable. He said you're so valuable, you give his son Jesus Christ. So as we get hold of that and we understand that, that means we can have faith in God. No fear, just faith. We can receive our peace from God. Not uneasiness, but peace when we're around God. We can be around God and we can have peace. We can go to church and have peace. We can, we can be even around other people who used to look bad at us or look down their nose at us. Who cares what you think about me? I already know what my God thinks about me. I'm at peace with God. You know, all of a sudden those people that used to look down their nose at you and tell you you're the wrong color, you're the wrong size, you're the wrong intelligence, you're the wrong this, you're the wrong that. It doesn't really matter because the big guy upstairs, the, the head honcho, the main one, God Almighty, he thinks I'm okay. So who cares what you think, amen? So you have that peace that passes human understanding and you have this joy, 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 joy down in your heart. Because you know that you and God have it all right. God loves you. It increases you. Jesus says, the reason I'm even telling you these things, the reason the Bible is letting you know you're valuable, is so you'll have joy. You'll have his joy. And that your joy might be full. So you have all kinds of joy, not a little bit. Amen? In Psalm 107, verse 20, he says, He sent his word and heal them. When you and I get into the word of God and understand that we're valuable, heal a lot of things. When you and I get into the word of God and understand we have great worth in God's eyes, it'll heal a whole lot of things. It'll heal our minds, it'll heal our emotions, it'll heal your body because a lot of sicknesses are brought on by worrying what other people think. Do you know that ulcers are sometimes brought on by worrying about what other people think. Sometimes it's worrying about finances, it's worried about this, it's worried about that. But do you know that there's people that worry about what other people think all the time? And because they worry about what other people think, all of a sudden they have these ulcers and stomach problems and all that. It can actually uh, do, uh, hurt them very much. But when you and I understand God thinks I'm okay, God understands that I'm worth a lot, all of a sudden he sends his word and he heals you. All of a sudden that stomach problem, that ulcer, it goes away because now I'm starting to understand that God loves me. Now if you're somebody who's had that problem, don't get down on yourself. I didn't say that to make you feel bad. I'm saying it to let you know what's happened. The devil comes to steal, to kill and destroy and he's used other people to talk to you, to demean you, to put you down, to make you think you're not worth anything. And all of a sudden you're feeling bad, that worry's there and, and, and it makes you sick. But all of a sudden, some preacher stands up and says, the Bible says you're valuable to God. He's sending his word to heal you, to heal your stomach, heal your mind, heal your heart, and heal all the above. Amen? Amen. He sent his word and healed them. And watch this, and delivered them from their destruction. You know, I don't know. I remember a long time ago about hearing about a boy whose parents would put him down all the time. Just cut him down, put him down, tell him he's a piece of trash. And he went to school, and the other kids mocked him and made fun of him because his parents didn't treat him right. He, he was, uh, was a stutterer, and he stuttered, and they mocked him and made fun of him. The kids at school did. Here he is just at home, trying to get comfort at home, and his parents are putting him down and mocking him, it said, and the thing I just read. Then he went to school trying to find comfort and the kids would mock him, make fun of him because he had this stuttering thing because his parents had been so mean to him. The teachers were an authority figure like his parents, so he was always scared of them and afraid of them. And one day, he went out and killed himself, a young boy. A boy that never knew his value because his daddy and mama never let him know. A boy who never knew his value because other people put him down and cut him down. 
a boy who could never talk right because he stuttered, and he stuttered because people put him down. Today, when I'm saying that you're valuable, I was in my office with uh, Roberta and Lisa earlier, and we were praying about this service, and we were praying that in this service, if there's somebody here today that's going through a real tough time, we prayed for you. And we even prayed if there's somebody in that room who's thinking about taking their life, or sometimes it's not you go blow your brain out or you don't hang yourself, but you just give up on life, or you, or you eat so much your heart goes and just blows up, or you, you drink so much you, you run into a tree, or you smoke so much, whatever it is. Maybe there's some destructive thing trying to eat, beat you. Because maybe it was mom and dad, maybe it was some old boyfriend or some old girlfriend. Maybe it was an old marriage or maybe it's a new marriage. Maybe it's whatever it is. I want to let you know now. Please hear me. You're valuable to God. Let the peace of God settle in your heart. Don't think the only way out of this is, is death. Or live a miserable life the whole time you wish you were dead. That's the devil and it's a lie of the devil. The truth is God considers you valuable. He loves you. Doesn't matter what color you are, what height you are, doesn't matter your intellectual standing, your financial standing. God loves you and he says you're valuable. Doesn't matter if the other kids at school are mocking you and make fun of you, your parents put you down, or your siblings did. I want you to know you're valuable to God. And the reason we're talking like this is because God sends his word to heal you and to deliver you out of all destruction. We're talking tonight so this will deliver you from all that is trying to destroy you. And let us not make any mistake. The Bible, Jesus himself said, and you've heard us say it so many times, but listen, sometimes we, we put out, oh yeah, yeah, it's over there. No, no, it's about you. It's about you allowing other people to make you feel not valuable. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. That's what happened to that little boy I read about. The thief came to steal, to kill, and destroy. He used his parents. He used the other uh, kids at school. He used the teachers. And it destroyed the boy. The thief comes to steal, to kill, and destroy. God sends his word to heal you and to deliver you out of all your destruction. Let it not destroy your life. Let it not destroy your mind, your happiness, your joy, and your peace. Let it not destroy your faith. Don't let it happen that way. Listen to what we said tonight. Listen to the word of God we, we read tonight. Listen to what God's word is saying. God is telling you and me that you're valuable. You know, there was a, a stutterer, a guy that stuttered a lot. He had a problem. He stuttered, stuttered, stuttered a lot. And he'll never be anything because he stutters all the time. How will he ever accomplish anything in life? Because all he did is stutter, stuttered, stuttered all the time. Couldn't even hardly say one sentence without stuttering and stuttering. And then one day, God touched him. And he stopped stuttering as he gave his heart to the Lord. And he became a minister. Started preaching at a church. Here he was, this ex-stutterer. Kids would mock him, make fun of him. His own family would wonder about him. And now here's this ex-stutter, and now he becomes a preacher. And while he's there, God tells him, you know, I want to heal people physically. And I need somebody who will go take that message that I still heal. <clears throat> and I need somebody who will go <clears throat> around the country and tell people that I still heal. And he said, okay, God, I'll give up my, my little church here, and I'll start preaching. I'll get a tent, and I'll put tents up, and I'll go around and tell people that God still heals. And he got himself a tent, started going around. Pretty soon, God says to him, he's doing really well. He's on television pretty soon. He's preaching the word, just stutter. This guy that the devil said would never amount to anything. His, his siblings even said he would never amount to anything. And now here he is preaching on TV. On TV. He became so popular, he was actually drawing more of an audience than the uh, TV shows they had at the time. And then he felt the Lord tell him to be, build a university. And so he was driving along, and the Lord said, I want you to build a university. He stutter, this kid, this, this dummy. It's, that's how he felt about himself. And all of a sudden, God uses him, and he builds. He says, well, God, I don't know how to build a university. He says, well, use that same mouth that used to stutter, and you pray in tongues. And as you pray in tongues, 
I'll interpret back to you how, what to do. And so he'd pray in tongues. So, okay, Lord, what are you saying? And the Lord would tell him, and he would sit there and start to draw the stuff and get architecture over and say, this is what God's showing me. And he drew it. And they would draw it and they built it. He built a whole university. And for a long time, it was the number one attraction in the state that he lived in. His university, because of how the architecture was and all that, here the stutter that looked like he amounted to nothing. The stutter that looked like he was a nobody. His name was Oral Roberts. Won so many souls to our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Turned so many lives around. My daughter Amy, my daughter Kara, my daughter Elizabeth, all graduated from Oral Roberts University. And this stutter, who was told he'd be nothing in life. <sighs> How about you? What is the devil telling you that you're not? Or we'll never amount to. Maybe you're uh, selling God short. I want you to know that God considered Oral Roberts valuable and God considers you valuable. I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know what it is. Maybe you'll never build a university. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll never be on TV preaching the gospel. Maybe you will. Maybe you'll never preach. Maybe you will. But maybe there's something God has for you and the devil wants to kill you young like that little boy. Why don't we fight back and live to be like Oral or other people and fight back and touch the world for Jesus. Amen. I want to pray for you. I want to come against the things that possibly have been coming against you. And it may have been just today, yesterday, and a week from, it could have been a years and years and years of that. Le uh, Lisa, can you come up here with me? Yeah, Lisa. Do we have a wireless mic up here, Mike? All right, Lisa, I'm going to ask you to take that microphone. Turn around, smile at everybody. And Leanne, I told her when she was in my office early and we were praying, I said, my wife would really like the color of this sweater. See? Yeah, I knew it. Yeah. See, it's, it, you know why? It, it looks close to the color of money. <laughs> she is not at all a money hunger. I just tease her about that. But Lisa, you've probably been there. Most of, have. Most of, ha most of us have. Where people have sold us short or told us we'd never amount to anything, or we, are, our own minds, tell us bad things about ourselves. Or somebody said something in passing, maybe even joking, but we thought they were serious, and it keeps plugging us, and the devil keeps playing it over and over and over and over in our minds. And maybe you're here today, you just don't measure up. You know, hey, Gary can teach, but I'll never teach. Pastor can teach, but I'll never teach. No, that's, if God called you, you'll teach. He said, but I'm not the right, no, no, you are. God called you, you are. You're valuable. Amy, you play that violin. Beautiful. You help bring the presence of God. This guy over here, Rick. Rick is related to me. My, my, my older brother, Ed, his oldest daughter is married to Rick. And uh, Rick is such a, a real man who loves God. And he decided he wanted to be used of God. Did you play guitar before? He had tried for years, couldn't play for at all, and then decided that, you know, he wanted to do something for God. And now he plays and leads praise and worship. What is God telling you that you'll never do? What is it that God's telling you you'll never accomplish, or the devil's telling you you'll never accomplish? What is it the devil's told you you're not big enough, you're not the right color, you're not smart enough? What has the devil said to you through other people? Well, Lisa, I'm going to ask you to pray for people today, okay? You say, but... I'm going to pray. Yeah, Lisa, see, the devil said to you, <laughs> you'd never be used to pray in front of everybody. But God said, you know what, Lisa? You're just starting. So I want you to pray whatever the Lord lays in your heart. Now remember this. It's not the fanciness of a prayer. It's the sincerity of the prayer. Okay, that's all. God loves you. Go ahead and pray for those in this room today that may have been told things about themselves and They've been down on themselves. And this message of value, they hear it, but they're still having a hard time. The enemy's whispering to them. Just pray for them, will you? Heavenly Father, I just want to thank you first and foremost for your will, for you just calling me up here, Father God, in obedience to do what needs to be done, Father God. And again, I just love you. I praise you. And I just know each of the people here, Father God, just 
are there loving you and living you, Father God, and we are our worst enemies. We like to call ourselves short, Father God, but I just thank you for Pastor's word, and I just pray that everyone has been encouraged, Father God, to know, to know, to know that they can do all things through Christ who gives them strength, Father God. Whatever the lies are that has come against them, it's gone in Jesus' name, Father God. They can rise. They can sing. They can play guitars. They can play violins. They could build churches. They could build universities, Father God. We can do all things through Christ who gives us strength, Father God. And I just stand up here as that representative, and I just receive that encouragement, and I just thank you and just ask you to bless all the people here, Father God, to just come away with a whole new mindset and just believe in themselves, Father God. And if we can't believe in ourselves, we all believe in you, Father God. And we just need to trust you and put one foot in front of the other. And we thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Praise God. That's pretty good. And Nick, can you come up here, please? Thank you, Lisa. Give him, uh, thank you very much. Nick, can you come up, please? This is Nick. Everybody say hi, Nick. Hi. Take this. I highly recognize you with the contacts. You look so good now. Of course, you look good before, you know. You look good always, you know that. Uh, Nick is someone who said, you know what, Pastor, a couple of years ago, him and I were talking, he said, he's coming to his, in my office with his brothers, but he was talking to me, he said, uh, I'm, I want to be committed. Something about that. The devil tells you you're not worthy. You might as well not commit to anything because you're going to not fulfill it, and you're unworthy anyway. And Nick, I don't know what kind of things are going through your mind about unworthiness, but I love the idea that you just decided to commit yourself. And when you committed yourself, things started to change, I believe, all around you. Uh, you touched people's lives, and, and I thank you for it. Today, I'm going to ask you to commit yourself to this. Commit yourself to not allow the devil to beat you up anymore. Commit yourself not to listen to the lie of the devil that tells you you're worthless. Commit yourself to believe God that you're valuable. Commit yourself to say, you know what, God, I'm going to believe you over all the lies I've heard most of my life. Commit yourself to say, you know what, I don't care if I stuttered. I don't care if I'm brown. I don't care if I'm white. I don't care if I'm short. I don't care if I'm black. I don't care. I don't care. I'm believing my God because he said I'm valuable, and I'm committing myself to believe you, Father, and not another voice. You're a man of commitment. I'm going to ask you to pray for all of us who are going to make a commitment. I'm believing God and not the devil any longer. I'm going to believe that I have value because God says I do. I'm not going to listen to those lies anymore. Go ahead and just pray, will you? Thank you, Father God, for everyone that came out here tonight when they could have been doing so many other things. Lord, I thank you for everyone that is just so committed to you this Wednesday night, coming out here, praising you, worshiping you, Father God. Lord, I just speak to everyone here tonight that is, has a heart to be committed to you. I pray that anyone that is um, wavering in any way, Father God, that you would touch their heart, that you would touch their mind, and you would touch their soul, and that you would bring them uh, close to you, Father God. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. Amen. Uh, Patty, will you come up here, please? Patty, can you come here? Uh, Patty's gone through some challenges. Uh, her husband went on to be with the Lord before she did. Her boys have moved away. She's gone through some other things. But what Patty continues to do is she continues to believe God's word. She gets challenged sometimes, and then she gets back up, and she keeps on going. Uh, you know, people that are perfect just keep on running all the time. That's one thing. But I kind of like those that sometimes uh, have to get back up because something hit them, and they get back up. and get. You, you, you're one of those that always get up. You know, somebody tries to knock you down. devil tries to knock you down devil tells you you're worthless. The devil says someone loves you. And you get back up and you just keep fighting. So I'm going to ask you to just pray for all the fighters in this room, to, for God to strengthen them, encourage them. Because the devil lies to lie, likes to lie to people. But we need to fight back. And so would you just pray that everyone in this room would have that fight in them given to them by Almighty God? It's a silver sign. Father, I just thank you for the strength that you give me and everyone else that faces challenges in their life. Um, thank you for the peace that you provide for us. Thank you that we can fall before you and that you are always with us. You never leave us nor forsake us. Even though at times we feel like we're alone, I know that we are not alone, even though the enemy tries to make us feel that way. So we, I thank you, Lord, that you just... Always give me, the, me and everyone else in this room as Christians, give us the strength, peace, and comfort. And I thank you, Heavenly Father, that you are always there right beside us and 
providing everything that we need to uh, face all these challenges in this world. I just thank you and praise you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much. Uh, if you'd stretch your hands right over this way, right over here. Uh, there's a young lady up here. She's, I'd have her stand up, but I think she might be already. <laughs> I'm only messing with her. Her name's Kathy. Uh, Kathy, uh, her mother is Mrs. Cash that went on to be with the Lord, the one that always tell your pastor, Pastor Tim, I love you. <laughs> and she's here today, and her, her mama just went on to be with the Lord the other day. And I just want all of us to pray a prayer of comfort. Gary, can you come up and do that if you would, please? Because, uh, you know, uh, I've been through that when a love member goes on to be with the Lord, I, and I know where they're at, but you still you miss them. And you just need some strength. You need brothers and sisters to pray for you. Could, so seriously, could you just stretch your hands out toward Hallelujah. Kathy here? Hallelujah. And they were best friends, and so this is not an easy one. Rick, why don't you just lay your hands on her, will you please? Go ahead, Gary. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just thank you that you are the God of peace and comfort. Father, we know Mrs. Cash is in a better place, yeah. Father. If she had a choice to come back, she would not choose that. Mm -hmm. She's in glory with you. Yeah. But, Father, we miss her, and we thank you for your comfort. You said that you are an ever-present help in our time of need. Yeah. And, Father, right now, I thank you that you're comforting her and her family. And, Father, we just thank you for that supernatural comfort that comes from you, that supernatural peace that comes from you. And Father, we'll give you the glory, and someday we'll see her again. Yeah. And we thank you for that. And we're looking forward to it. Not too quick, but uh, we are looking forward to it <laughs> in the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 God is good. Not too quick, huh? <laughs> Preacher gave a great altar call, preached a great sermon, and it gave, gave a great altar call and said, does anybody here want to receive Jesus? Everybody did. Everyone run and received Jesus Christ. Said, Even if you've received him before, let's just make a statement. They all raised their hands. They all prayed, except for one guy. And after the service, he went up to him and said, do you love Jesus? He goes, yeah. He goes, don't you want to go to heaven? He says, yeah. He goes, why didn't you pray the prayer? He says, I thought you were taking a bus up there today the way you were talking. I, I'm going to go some other time. <laughs> um, Gary, I just want you to stay up here if you could. Could you come back up? Uh, Gary wants to talk to you and invite you to something. Um, this, uh, he wants to invite you here again next Wednesday, and he's wanting to also have you invite anybody you know that is facing any kind of sickness whatsoever. Uh, Gary's, Gary's been teaching uh, every Thursday, every other, or every t two Thursdays a month on healing, and it's, it's, it's drawing to a close. Uh, and so we talked about how we wanted to uh, stop that. We may start it back up after the holidays we don't know we might start something else this man's full of good word but um this next wednesday why don't you just talk to him about what we're believing for for you well we're going to have a healing service and uh if there's anything that you are uh, is coming against your body or someone you know bring them bring yourself and uh, we're believing god for healing which is part of our covenant which is uh, part of the benefit it, that we have as being children of the living God. Amen. So I, I would imagine most people in this room believe that, trust God for healing. Well, we're going to see manifestations of it. Amen? Amen. 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 Next Wednesday. It's going to be a good time, don't you think? Amen. We're going to have to figure out be how here to... Be or be square. Yeah. <laughs> well, we don't know that we can call you up here and pray for you because there's very little room, but we'll get to you. Uh, we're going to ask Gary to really take charge of that meeting, and I, I'll be here. I'm going to be part of it also, but I just think it's going to be a spectacular, wonderful time, and those of you that have been coming uh, those two Thursdays a month that Gary is teaching, uh, you heard a lot about faith in those meetings, and you heard a lot about healing and faith that it go into every area of your life, and so this Wednesday coming up is going to be a tremendous time as... Uh, Gary takes that service and leads us into a time, and I'll be here to help lay hands and pray for people. It's going to be a wonderful time. You come if you have any need at all. Any need at all. Now, when you say healing, do you mean just of the body? Do you also emotions, mind, mental? No, as a matter of fact, God cares a lot about the soulish realm. Um, we've seen over the years, and we've talked about it, uh, 
people that come into the church and they need healing in their soulish realm, yeah. in their mind, emotions. Yeah. And, and God's a healer of all. Amen. He's a healer of your physical body, your, your mental body. He can heal your spiritual need. Yes. You can get saved. I mean, God's a, a complete healer. You know what the word is? Sozo, made complete yeah. in him. Amen. And that's what he wants for you and me. Yeah. Amen. Stay up here for a minute, if you would, please. So I'm going to ask you next Wednesday to please come expecting something to take place. Yes. Uh, you know, people say, well, don't you wish you had that old building? Um, uh, sometimes uh, I think I'd like to have it to uh, do something. But most of the time, no. I'm looking forward to the new building. You know, <laughs> uh, I'm looking forward to a new thing. And so, you know, no, I really don't think about it that much. I think about our new place and I keep visualizing what, what it's going to be like. Uh, but some people say, well, you know, you got to wait till you get there to do something. No, we're going to do something here. Amen. We're going to have a great service, a healing service. So you come, you got a headache, a toe problem, and your nose is out of joint. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever it is, God can handle it. Amen. Amen. And Gary's going to be in charge of the meeting next Wednesday. I'll be here. I'll be praying with him. I'll be right with him, beside him, whatever. But we're going to see some great miracles take place, aren't we, buddy? Amen. It's, it'll, be, it'll be fun. Minister beside you, buddy. It's always good to see yeah. God move. Isn't it, though? It's yeah. wonderful. Uh, listen, uh, talk to them a little bit about offering, if you would, please. And, I, and I, you have to say a little bit, because I know when you take <laughs> off on this, this you know a lot. You know what? Somebody was in my office earlier today, and uh, they said, uh, well, Lisa, I'll just tell you. It was Lisa. Lisa was in my office, and she said that uh, the place she lives in now, the condo she bought and all that, she said it was because she stopped you and asked you, a question about giving and you explained to her about giving and then receiving and being blessed so she started implementing that in her life and that's how she was able to get her condo so she said because of you talking to her about that it encouraged her to start tithing and giving and then she saw the reward from that and she got a condo before she was just not able to do that so go ahead and talk for a minute the Bible says that if we'll honor God with the first fruits of all of our increase that he'll Fill your barns with plenty. He doesn't just say your barn like one. He says barns. And your vats, they're plural. God's not against you having more than one storehouse. Amen? Amen. God is a blesser. We just have to get in line with his program. The kingdom of God. He, he says he wants to provide for you. He is your provider, but you have to let him. You have to get in line with, and I don't mean line up here. I mean, <laughs> no, get in line with his word. Do the things. Giving, uh, it, it makes no sense to give. Well, that means that I'm subtracting from my income. No, as you give... The Bible says, it is given to you, good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over. Giving is the way that God blesses you. It's a, it's a spiritual law. When you take something out of this kingdom, the world, and put it into his kingdom, you have now transferred money into the kingdom of God. Now God is, now this could sound funny, He's obligated to bless you. Obligated? Well, yeah. You know why? Because he said it. Amen. When you give, it's given to you. Amen. So you're obligated because you're standing on his word, if you'll apply faith. Amen? Amen. I, I know it's... That's good stuff, man. So when I give my offering, um, the Bible says this. The Bible says here in Hebrews, it says, Here on earth men receive your offering, but when you give... In heaven, Jesus receives it. So what you just said is mightily important. Now watch, because sometimes we get the wrong picture. You're putting in the offering, but spiritually you're taking your offering, you're putting it into the kingdom of God, and you're giving it to Jesus. Amen. And, and Jesus never is outgiven. I mean, when you give to Jesus, you're going to get blessed. You give him your heart, you have eternal life, forgiveness of sin, and you're blessed. So when you take your natural stuff and you put it into the kingdom of God, it's put into the spirit realm, men receive it, or women will be receiving it, usherettes and usher, ushers, they'll be receiving it, but in heaven it'll be Jesus, the spiritual, will be receiving it. Amen? Amen. 
But why don't you pray for all those uh, today who are giving. I just, I just like blessing people. Thank Amen. you so much, Nick. Thank you very much. Thank you. Lisa, thank you. Thank you very much for coming up here. And, and uh, Patty, thank you for praying. And, and God bless you. Will Hallelujah. you please pray? Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that you are our Father. You are our provider. And Father, you, you're big on honor. And as we honor you, you said that you will bless us. So we honor you with the tithe. We honor you with the offering. And Father, we thank you that your blessing rests upon every person that gives, that you show them, Father, how much you love them. You show them how much you want to bless them, Father, with increase. And we thank you for that, Father, as we uh, give to you. We exercise faith, honoring you, not giving to a church, but giving to you. And we thank you that you are the blesser. Your blessing rests upon us as we give in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Amen.